It's two undefeated Blue Bloods for the state championship. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on the Class 4A Division II state championship preview show brought to you by Power Plus Mouthguard and L4FR Clothing on the LSG Sports Network. And it is truly two teams that know the state championship game well, especially in the last 10 years. You've got 12 state championship appearances between the two teams, 10 state championships and we're here to preview what is going to be an absolutely great game. Oh, and both teams are 15-0. and 0. Uh, So you've, you've got a combined 30-0 and 0 matchup here. And so what we're going to do is what we've been doing on all of our shows. We're going to have coaches interviews. We're going to have Road to States. We're going to have the LSG and NETSN crew pick games. I'm going to have Matt Diggs on. Coach X from sideline to sideline. He'll be on to pick and talk this game. I don't know if he really picks this one. Some of them he actually picked. He always kind of gives a pick at the end, but if you know Coach X... By the way, a real coach in the state of Texas. He sends us humorous picks each and every week, and I read them. Uh, but on state championship week, we have him actually get, get on the phone, and we talk to him. Uh, he, he gives a pick, but he doesn't always really break down why. Uh, but it's going to be a blast as always. So what we're going to do is we're going to start it off first. Thanking our sponsors, including our title sponsors, Power Plus Mouth Guards. You can find them online at PowerPlusMouthGuards.com. If your kid plays sports and you want to keep him as concussion-free as possible, check out Power Plus Mouth Guards. They have a study that 6,500 athletes who've used the product have a concussion rate of 0.2%. That's amazing right there. And all their data and research is right there on their website, independent studies this isn't something they did to, to prove their point they have outside companies look at their product and make sure that their product is exactly what they want it to be something that protects against concussion so check them out also l4fr clothing all your fire resistant clothing needs brett lee and l4fr clothing will take care of them for you uh they have everything from boot cut jeans relax fit jeans carpenter jeans free float uh, shirts pullovers flannels Safety gloves, safety goggles, they have it all. Put in the promo code LSG22, you get 20% off of your total. Again, that's L4FR Clothing. Find them online at L4FRClothing.com. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break. Then when we come back, we'll do it this way. We'll do uh, the Carthage uh, Road to State and then the head coach of Carthage, Scott Surratt. Then we'll do Wimberley's Road to State and then Wimberley's head coach, Doug Warren. And we'll do all that when we come back right here on the LSG Sideline to Sideline Class 4A Division 2 State Championship Preview Show on the LSG Sports Network. Hey, football fans, Christmas is right around the corner. We have the perfect gift for your high school football fan in your life. Friday Night Legends, the board game. With Friday Night Legends, you can play the greatest high school teams of all time against each other based on their real stats. That means you can play the 1989 Odessa Permian Panthers of Friday Night Lights fame against the 2017 Mater Day team and really see who's the better team. Or what about Peyton Manning's Newman High School in New Orleans against Trevor Lawrence's Cartersville, Georgia team? There are thousands of teams in the library from all over the United States. Get your copy of Friday Night Legends at BoardGameLegends.com and be the hero of Christmas morning. Terry Bennett back here on the Class 4A Division II State Championship Preview Show brought to you by... Power Plus Mouth Guard, L4FR Clothing. So, road to the state. How did the Cartridge Bulldogs get here? Well, I thought it'd be no better person to tell us uh, than the crew at Northeast Texas Sports Network. Find them online at NTSN.live. Find them on Twitter in an NT, NETSN underscore live. Brett and the crew do a wonderful job covering Northeast Texas, and, and so I thought it was perfect for them to do the road to the state for the Carthage Bulldogs. So here is NETSN and the road to state for Carthage. Thanks, Terry. Well, next we're going to talk about the road to the state for Carthage. The Carthage Bulldogs, the basically the favorite all season of 4A Division Two. And there's a reason, guys. You look down the schedule that they play, and it's been a pretty tough one, and they've handled it pretty easily. A um, couple of the matchups that 
predominantly are important in this schedule. Kilgore, a 4A Division One team that advanced four rounds into the playoffs, they handily beat them in the first week, 45 to 10. They knocked off Pittsburgh after that, 51 22. Uh, Cornerstone Christian from San Antonio, 41 to nothing. Marshall, a 5A Division II team in East Texas, 42 to nothing. Uh, then they got to district. Bullard, 56 to 7. Brownsboro, 69 to 13. Canton, 49 to 0. Rusk, 49 to 0. Center, 64 to 28. And Van, 41 to 15. Guys, they just kind of ran through district. I mean, what do y'all see? Any of those games stick out to y'all before we hit the playoff games? Not really. I mean, they, they're they dominant. They've always been dominant. So um, this is nothing new to Carthage. They, they, they control their district, and they have for some time. So, um, yeah, it's nothing really sticks out. This is normal I, to them. I do. I mean, of course, the district is going to be the district. Um, only opponent that, that scored enough points on them was was center. They put up 28 points on them that year. Yeah. And and center is a very good football team late in the season. They they kind of came on and came 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 with themselves. But, um, I mean, Carthage by committee, you know, defense, they control a lot of the clock. And I mean, by the third quarter, they're putting in you know freshman subs. <laughs> so I mean, they don't have to play their starters a complete game. So, um, but but Glenn Rose to them, and they they made them play a complete football game. So shout out to Glenn Rose for so. But you know, Carthage is a big red machine, if you want to call it. Uh, I mean, that they're doing exactly what Carthage does. I, I the thing that sticks out to me covering Van that was in that district. That district's I mean, it's not a. I wouldn't say top to bottom. It's a, a, a real strong district. There are some bottom feeder teams in that district, but the top teams in that district are are stout. You know, Van's going to be well coached every year and, and be a tough out. And Carthage handled them in a monsoon. So, um, and then Center had a really good season, a very athletic team, and Carthage took it to Center, hung sixty four on them, and then shut out Rusk and Canton. So, uh, the district that they had in in the season, the regular season they had. I wouldn't say it was as easy as maybe some years they've had past, but uh, they definitely had a, a few challenges in there. But overall, man, this this team was just gaining momentum, and I, it, they made me a believer the night, like I said, at that monsoon, and they're running offense like it's you know seventy five degrees and sunny outside, like a seven on seven. So um, just very impressed with their their overall regular season. Another another district championship for Coach Scott Surratt and the Bulldogs. I think what impressed me is. And Kyle, you said their district was tougher, but they made it look like it wasn't. Right. They, they kind of yeah. rolled through it just like any other year where their district wasn't as tough. It just, I think they're that much better this year that they basically just showed up Friday night, did their thing for a half, put the backups in, and moved on to the next week. Didn't have a whole lot of competition. Um, and we go through the playoffs round, and, and they matched up against Pittsburgh for the second time. You know, it's hard to beat a team twice. Not if you're Carthage. They <laughs> rolled through them 42-7. Yep. to seven. Then they had Van Alstine. They beat them 61-30. to 30. And then they had the big matchup with Gilmer. We all kind of talked about that preseason, that that would be the, the state championship, we say. You know, that was Carthage's toughest game. Now, Gilmer didn't have their starting quarterback. <clears throat> had to put Fulellan in at quarterback in that one. Um, there was a couple of plays – in the second half that could have gone Gilmer's way that could have changed the tide there, but it didn't. And Carthage was able to, you know, knock them off 28 to seven. Um, looks like easy fashion, but that game was actually closer uh, than the score. And then, then you have Pleasant Grove with the, always a predominantly powerhouse team made easy, easy work with them 45 to 14. And again, you know, I talked about Glenn Rose, in the last six, there was six minutes to go. Carthage was down seven. I mean, this game yeah. was the first time they trailed all year. This was this probably game. the sloppiest game they played, and they still came out on top. So now you've got them matched up in the state championship game against a Wimberley team, which came from behind in the second half, 
to knock off a really good Cuero team um, and two 15-0 teams. If you're, if you're Carthage, did the Glen Rose game help you? Because now you maybe have gotten that ugly game out of the way and now you can refocus your team. Say, okay, guys, we can't, we can't fool around and do this if we're going to take this state championship. I think so. I think you need a game like this um, for multiple reasons. Number one, you get all the kinks out. You're able to look back and say, okay, this is the stuff that didn't work. Uh, Why weren't we able to execute on these plays and focus on those uh, to get a, get a different result. Uh, Number two, um, honestly, you don't really get a lot of games like this out of Carthage. So the fact that it happened now, I wouldn't expect for it to happen again uh, this season. So now that it's out the way, uh, you might see Carthage go back to rolling uh, the uh, the big red machine, as Corey put it. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if they roll in the state. So I, I definitely think the, the close game last week helped them because if you look at, at Wimberley's season, they're 15-0, and 0, but they've played close games. They, their very first game was a seven-point win over Canyon Lake. They beat Brock by nine points. They beat Fredericksburg by three, Lampasas by ten. Like, they've had close games throughout the year, whereas Carthage hasn't. And so I'm not saying they, they're not comfortable in close games because they just proved they could win one against Glen Rose. But when Wimberley's been tested like that all year, they're used to it. Whereas if you're Carthage, it's kind of like a shot in the mouth, like, okay, all right, y'all, it, it wakes you up. So I think playing a close game last week against Glen Rose is bad news for Wimberley because you just woke up a beast that was already dominant, and now they know, okay, well, let's go out and put the gas pedal to the floor right off the bat and jump out to a big lead where we don't have to make it close. Just another – we can get our freshmen in on the state game now. You know, <clears throat> Carthage does what Carthage does. Uh, Coach Red does a fantastic job. Um, I'm not going to even count how many. They have more championships than I have fingers. Um, so, I mean, I'm not going to say that, but I always use this as an analogy. It's a business trip. Um, and it's also you you win ugly, you know, and that. but but if you win, you win ugly, you, you still win. So sometimes on the road to state championship, it's hard to it's hard to beat teams in a dominant fashion because they know that they're, you are the defending national or defending champion, even though they didn't win last year, but they know your pedigree. So you're going to get every team's best shot in the playoffs, no matter what. So you're going to get every trick play. You're going to get every hat trick. You're going to get everything. So people are going to come at you no matter what. And Carthage is going to get everybody's best shot, especially in the playoffs. And I'm pretty sure Wembley threw the entire playbook at them and, and did that. So, at the end of the day, Carthage took care of business like they were supposed to. That you know they've got some got a big game from KJ Edwards, a freshman, and came out and had a fantastic game. Uh, Connor Cuff had a good game too. I mean, they're just well balanced with their receivers. Uh, Noah Patty, uh, Noah Patty's great. Uh, Montreal Hatton Jr. and then Braden Manning are all fantastic receivers, and they put up big numbers. It's no just big one superstar. As you recall in the past, has always been one superstar you know th- that they've had in the past it's a balanced attack and this team is young they learned from that experience last year be- getting beat by china springs they came back hungry and they knew what the mission was it's a business trip this time and i'm where i'll pick i know i'm picking carthage i don't know about y'all but i'm picking carthage yeah they've got un- they've got unfinished business i would say Corey. Yeah. absolutely uh something yeah. that they want to get back to where they didn't get last year um Yep, that's the road to state for Carthage. Back to you, Terry. And we'll have their picks here in a little while when we get to the pick section of the show. Uh, we'll have their picks, Chris Daly, Grant Goodwin and I, sideline to sideline, Coach X, sideline to sideline, and then Matt Dix, sports writer of the year. All will be talking this game. That's how big this game is, man. The whole crew is here because uh, that's what happens when you've got four A blue bloods like Wimberley and Carthage taking on each other. All right, so we heard about the road to the state. Now here's Chris Daly as he talks to Scott Surratt, head coach of the Bulldogs, as he tries to go nine for nine in state championship appearances. First off, congratulations. Uh, another um, trip to the state championship. Yes, sir. I appreciate you. Oh, you bet. You bet. So um, uh, talk about first that Glenn Rose game. That was a lot closer than a lot of people expected. Well, we knew it was going to be a great contest just because we 
obviously had every film. They had all our film, and we traded all video, mm-hmm. and uh, we knew how good they were going in. Uh, their offense was, uh, uh, you know, very special, uh, led by the quarterback, but they had other, a lot of other great players around the offensive line. Uh, running back is a really good player. They had good receivers, so really no weaknesses. And then uh, defensively, they showed tons of looks, and um, that hurt us a little bit. Now, is is that a Glen Rose team we should be watching for next year? He told me it was full of seniors, so I, I'm not sure. So ah. it, it was it was a senior laden bunch. Right, I got you. Cool. Well, uh, so talk about getting here again. Uh, you know, I don't know how many seasons now ten, eleven seasons you've had uh, undefeated regular season, and then uh, nine championship appearances. Uh, you know, the Carthage community is, are they like state championship or nothing? Well, it's just, <laughs> that's just what we built. And, um, you know, it's very disappointing. I can answer that by, you know, losing last year and being, um, 11 or 12 and oh, I don't even remember. And then getting beat by China Spring, it was uh, like a very, very disappointing season. So that kind of answers your question. It's, uh, you know, it's unfortunate some for the the kids, you know, but uh, it is a lot of pressure around here to win, but you wouldn't have any uh, other way. That's the way we uh, we love it. That's the way we've, uh, our coaches have built it. And um, so it is. Since since you got this, we got this good a team and we're this far, and that's the way we feel if we don't get it done. Right. And, and talk about your team right now. Uh, Connor Cuff uh, seems to be doing a great job at quarterback. Um, talk about him a little bit. Yeah, he's he's the guy that gets us going, and uh, he's our leader. I think he's thrown, I don't know, 47, 48 touchdowns and four interceptions. And, you know, he's a very good runner, and we, we saw that a little bit the other night. And um, so um, he's just, he just a special athlete but a special leader, and he's done a great job for us. And looking at the running back numbers, you've got sort of a running back by committee situation. Uh, you just have a whole stable of runners, right? We do. We're, we're uh, we feel like we're four four deep there, and uh, you know, three of them's got quite a bit of yards. We brought a freshman KJ Edwards up, and um, he leads mm-hmm. us in yards per carry. And um, you know, we gave him the, the ball something that wasn't his night the other night. It was it was the other two's uh, backs tonight. Mm-hmm. And um, Dowden got hurt. Randy and Dowden got hurt against Pleasant Grove, hurt his hand, had to come out. And, mm-hmm. and uh, the other two had big nights. And then the other night we put LD or, or Dowden in the second half, and he had a big night, especially the finish. Nice. And, and so talk about the troubles that gives the opposite team when they can't focus on somebody. Yeah, they're all a little different. You know, I, I, I think it might present some problems just because LD's more of a power back. Um, and uh, Katie Matlock, he can do anything. He's really good out of the backfield. He's our best protector. You know, obviously caught a touchdown the other night, and uh, he can really run. And then the freshman, uh, KJ, he's uh, he's more of a slasher, and but he's got a lot of power, too, when, he's, when he centers you up. So they're, they're all a little different and does present some problems. And, and what about your uh, defense? What kind of depth do you have there? Well, our first line players are, I mean, our defense is uh, its a little misleading how many points we've given up. I think 11 or 12 a game, but uh, it was, I believe, three, uh, two and a half going into the playoffs. And then um, I know in Van Austin we were way up, and then they scored, uh, uh, I believe, 30 on our on our backups and stuff. And, um, so anyway, that, that's a bit, they, we got a great team over there. I mean, they, they do a great job led by uh, coach Dan Preston. He's been here a while mm-hmm. with me. And, um, you know, we do have some guys, some depth behind them if somebody gets hurt. And so we're, we're excited about their play and they wasn't very excited about their play Friday night and they take it personal or, mm-hmm. or we take it personal defensively. And, um, I think you'll see a better performance this week. Nice. And and talking about your opponent, Wimberley, what do you see over there that you need to pay attention to? Big and physical. Uh, linebackers yeah. are really big and physical, and we got to control those guys. And then the running back is uh, 
very physical. The quarterback is is uh, really talented. He took off for a big run, the first touchdown of the game the other night. You can see how fast mm-hmm. he is. Throws the ball extremely well. Uh, they got big offensive linemen, so they're uh, they're fifteen zero for a reason. And probably you know to start off with it is you got Coach Doug Warren's a great coach, so yeah. um, he does a phenomenal job. He's there every year. They know how to win, and uh, they got a great culture over there. And and how do you think your lines, offense and defense, compare to Wimberley's? Well, I hope so. I hope we match up good. You know, we're a little banged up in there, offensive line, mm-hmm. but. Um, you know, hopefully we can uh, match up well, but it's going to be in the trenches. I think it's going to be a, a lot of good battles in there. Yeah, and and speaking of uh, injuries, how are you guys in terms of health? Well, Hatton and uh, Montreal Hatton and go last week, and um, we we feel like he's going to get to go this week. He did go in pregame; was limping too much, so. Uh, I think another week with strengthening, I think he'll be able to go. Our, our right guard, Johnny Lewis, played the first series and had to come out with a knee injury. And But he was in treatment yesterday, so hopefully he can go. And other than that, we we're, we're should be full strength. Nice. Uh, and so if you do go and win another state championship, is Carthage going to have to put a new building just for your trophies and, and gold ball? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hope that I hope that uh, we have to answer that after Friday, and that's, that's all we worry about that game. But uh, you know, we got a very nice trophy case, and uh, but uh, hopefully, hopefully, we got another one. This show is brought to you by the book "All I Need to Know I Learned from My Texas High School Football Coach," a handbook of wisdom for parents, young people, and yes, even coaches. Head over to www.learnedfromcoach.com and order your copy to support sharing the stories of these great coaches and leaders. That's learnedfromcoach.com. All right, we've done Carthage's Road to State and their head coach. Now here is Wimberley's Road to State. This is being brought to you by... Balls Brothers painting right there in Wimberley. No project is ever complete until you're 100% satisfied. They provide a three-year warranty against any chipping, flaking, or peeling, giving you the extra protection and the satisfaction that is guaranteed. That's Balls Brothers painting in Wimberley. We do appreciate them. Here is the road to state for the Wimberley Texans. Hey, everybody, this is The Road to State for the Wimberley Texans. I'm Chris Daly, founder of Lone Star Gridiron and co-founder of Lone Star Podcast Network. And I tell you, Wimberley had a tough road to the state. I mean, yes, they're looking, they're sitting there undefeated, but it was not without challenges. They started off the season against Canyon Lake. That's a rival. I call it a rival just because it's right up the road. A lot of the kids know each other. They're best friends. They're, it, it's so close. This rivalry has been very one-sided. Wimberley has rolled in this rivalry, but they've been close games like this game. Very first game, 21 to 14. I mean, it, it was not easy. And and when I watch this game, I'm thinking, uh, Wimberley might not be all that great this year just because it was so close. But then they kicked things off uh, in full speed when they went up against San Antonio Piper, 35 to nothing. Brock, very next game, was a test. I mean, Brock is sitting in the 3A D1 title game right now, so that lets you know this was a tough test. Uh, and it was all that Wimberley could do to win this game, 32 to 23. That, uh, I think, gave them a challenge early, and um, that kind of set up, set them up for the season. Talk about challenge. They went up against Fredericksburg next. Fredericksburg, again, a rivalry, and it was, again, a very close victory, 17 to 14. Three points separated them. Then they traveled to Lampasas. Lampasas isn't one of those teams that a lot of people thought they should worry about, but Wimberley walks away with a win, 38 28. They gave up the most they had given up all season, so that put uh, Coach Doug Warren on notice hey, we've got to tweak some things on defense. And tweak he did. <laughs> they took on Gerald at home next and. Uh, all over them. The offense was clicking. The defense was clicking. 73 to 14. Uh, they took care of uh, Gerald. Then they traveled to Manor New Tech. 63 to nothing. Things are looking really good. 
What's next? Another rivalry. Uh, Geronimo Navarro, the Panthers, tough team. Uh, they had some losses early. They had a tough schedule, but but it's it's a good team and it's a rivalry. These two teams have went at it uh, neck and neck for several years now. Probably the last decade they've been going at it. Um, Wimberley escapes another one, twenty-one to fourteen. Then a game that looks like will develop into a rivalry since Lago Vista moved into their district. Wimberley traveled to Lago Vista to take on the Vikings. Another very close game, 31-28. And and what I'm seeing there is Wimberley knows how to win close games, right? Um, Next game was not. They took on Austin, achieved 66 to nothing, rolled through them. Uh, YMLA next. 81 to nothing. So those were kind of breathers. Then again, Orange Grove, another breather, 48 to nothing. So in a three game span, they had outscored those opponents 195 to nothing. I mean, talk about clicking. Again, th- th- it wasn't a big challenge. I mean, that that's a way to start. And two of those were playoff games. So that's a great way to start the playoffs. Next up, a rematch against Gerald. 64 to 6 rolled through them and you're thinking man Wimberley once they got out of district they're rolling and and that district was rolling everybody in the district won by district and everybody kept going until the district started knocking each other off and speaking of which then they faced off against Lago Vista once again took care of Lago Vista for the second time in the season 49 to 30 and faced Cuero <laughs> I know I've been saying rivalry the entire time, but this is a true rivalry. Uh, these teams were in the same di- district for for a long time and were neck and neck, and it was whichever team would would win the second game because they would play in district, they would play again in the playoffs. Whoever won the second time would go to the state championship and often win it. Uh, so uh, this is a true rivalry. Plus, the added drama to that rivalry is both head coaches, Gerald Fikash from Cuero and, of course, Doug Warren from Wimberley, were assistants under Weldon Nelms from Wimberley the last time Wimberley won a state championship in 2011. So there's a lot of rivalry there. Um, this one really lived up to the hype. Cuero jumped out to an early lead, and once again, Wimberley found a way. They got back into it. They took the lead at the end, got the win, 42-36. to 36. That sets them in a collision course against Carthage. Yes, you know Carthage. <laughs> Carthage of eight state titles. Man, talk about a challenge, but there is a pass here where Wimberley could win this one. They've got the horses Clint Stover at sophomore. I didn't mention they lost their their quarterback at the beginning of the season, so they brought in Clint Stover, a sophomore, and he has not only filled that role, he has excelled. And so anytime you have a sophomore quarterback putting up over 2,300 yards, throwing 31 TDs, and rushing for nearly 1,200 yards and another 20 TDs, we're talking 51 TDs this kid has. That's a sophomore. That means... The program's in good shape. Uh, and running the ball, Johnny Ball, perfectly named kid, right? I mean, he has almost 1,400 yards rushing, 20 TDs. He has been coming on later and later in the season, but in that Cuero game, he he was so dominant. And so look for that weapon to really be brought out in that Carthage game. Stover's favorite receiver, Noah Birdsong, had 600 yards receiving and six TDs. Um, and that defense has racked up um, some impressive numbers. Jack Reiser, 83 tackles. Lane Patek, 64 tackles. Added five interceptions to that. Brazen Leonard, 64 tackles. Junior Troy Hughley, 13 sack. Uh, it's going to be a great game. And I believe that as long as you're healthy, if you're tested on the way to your state title game, that puts you in a better position than a team that just rolls there. All right, that has been the Wimberley Texans Road to State. This is Chris Daly wishing your team the best of luck at State.
And that's the road to state for the Texans. Tracy Phillips, Homestead and Ranch Real Estate in Wimberley say to the Texans and to Eli Dubison, code red, play hard and take care of each other. Texan pride for life. Also, go Wimberley Texans and number 16, Cody Heckle. Beat the Bulldogs from Kevin and Betty and Heckle Built Construction. Corey Pack with Corey Pack State Farm Insurance wants to wish the Texans all the best at state. Go Code Red. Shane Frazier and Wimberley Subway say, go Texans, bring home another trophy. Josh Stillman says, on behalf of Summit Roofing and Construction, we want to give a shout-out to the Wimberley Texans heart and soul of the team. Johnny Ball, we want to congratulate you and the Texans on making it to the state finals. Give them hell, guys. Code Red. I, first off, love the app Code Red. I I think that's one of those cool things uh, that Wimberley does. You know, you have Albany. They do the the drums. They they bang a a barrel like a drum for 24 hours during the playoffs every day. Uh, And and, and Code Red for me, Wimberley, is absolutely uh, awesome. And we're going to finish up. Gabriel Gantz with G-Force Electric supports the Wimberley Texans, and he'll be cheering every step of the way for another state championship. Go Code Red. Red, and we do appreciate the shout outs here from the Wimberley Texan fan base. What an absolutely dedicated, loyal, and a great, great football town. And now we've done Road to State, we've done the shout outs. Now let's talk to the head coach of the Wimberley Texans, Coach Doug Warren. Chris Daly sat down with him this week and talked at this game. First off, congratulations on making it back to state. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. Uh, and and I tell you, you know, I, I watched a few of your games early in the year, and then later at the year I watched several more. And Johnny Ball came, seemed to come from nowhere. Uh, talk about him a little bit. Well, um, you know, didn't come out of nowhere. You know, yeah. we knew exactly what we had. But, but you know, one thing that, that uh, you know, we're not going to do is, is uh, just – you know, give the ball to a running back and and pound them early in the season. Uh, yeah. When we, when especially when we expect you know to play a long time and and but uh, he, I will say this: the young man has you know kicked it into a, an extra gear and uh, has just really really become a really really good running back. Um, you know, the last uh, few weeks. Yeah, and 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 talk about Cody Stover because he's been just stellar all year, and he seemed to be getting better as you go later too. Well, you know, um, Cody's just such a such a tough, you know, competitor, and and uh, we knew we knew what we had had with him. We were just, uh, you know, a little behind the eight ball as far as as you know when he got started, and and yeah. you know the kind of direction that we needed to go with our offense, and so it's kind of been slow developing as far as just uh, letting him get comfortable and then adding, you know, adding to the arsenal. Uh, yeah, but you know, he's such a, such a tough competitor, uh, and a really, really good leader, you know, and the kids have really taken that. And that's hard to, to find, especially as a sophomore, you know, a lot of times, yeah, uh, sophomores don't, you know, don't have that, you know, but, uh, man, he's done a great job and, and has done everything we ask and, and just, you know, exhaled. Yeah, definitely. And, and a lot of, uh, people are overlooking, because of guys like this, the defense, uh, talk about some of the defensive players because y- y'all are just, you know, blanking people most of the season. Well, you know, we knew early that we would be behind offensively a little bit. Uh, uh-huh. and so we knew defense would, would need to carry us and, and they did. And, and, uh, but, you know, it's something that we've hung our hat on around here for a long time, playing solid physical defense. Uh, you know, code red, uh, what, what the name of it is. And, and, uh, man, these kids right here have just, uh, they've locked into it. They've, they've done a really good job. They pride themselves on playing good defense and being really, really physical. Uh, and they've done a great job of that, you know, throughout the season. And, and how do you think this team compares to that 2019 team that, uh, made it there but didn't finish? Well, uh, it's, uh, you know, each team has their own, uh, Persona, I guess, you know, I think that one was a little more, you know, this one has turned into a little more uh, run game oriented, you know, mm-hmm. a physical pound the ball at you, but with the ability to, to beat you with the pass, that, that team was, uh, you know, we could really throw the football with with that group and have some dynamic playmaker, playmakers out there. 
um, you know, you got to give their hats off to both of them because they, they made it, you know, this far, uh, which yeah. is really, really hard to do, you know, as well as I do, it's hard to get to this spot. Uh, and so, um, you know, this one, we just, you know, in 19, we didn't, uh, you know, we didn't get it done there. And, and uh, you know, that's the goal. It's time to go finish it this time. Right. And and basically all season, people have been handing the crown to Carthage before any games were even played. They, they've they shown some weakness. I mean, you, you both had almost identical scores in the semifinals. But um, what do you see about Carthage that uh, you think we can attack? Well, the, I mean, you know, they rightfully so, they've earned that spot of, you know, I mean, they've just been so solid and so spectacular the last, you know, 10, 12, however many years, you know, yeah. especially, and, and everybody is, they've set the standard for us, you know. Um, I think the thing that, that's, um, you know, for us, we have to go and be physical, um, no doubt. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've done that for 15 weeks. We've prided ourselves on being the most physical football team. We're going to have to do that again on, uh, you know, Friday morning. We have to take care of the ball, and you can't get into the limit. Uh, you know, you can't, can't have any turnovers against a really good football team. And But, uh, you know, I, I like where we are, and, and you know, this team, uh, they have a lot of confidence in, in who they are, and, and, uh, you know, they're excited to go out there and try to prove it against the best. And, and this Carthage team seems like they pass more than some previous ones. They have they, they have a ton of running backs, but it's more of a running back by committee. So what do you focus on defensively? Well, you know, um, they do throw the ball, but, man, when it comes down to it, you know, if you watch them, um, like you said, they've got a stable of running backs, and when it comes down to it, um, that's what they uh, they're gonna they're gonna run the ball, and they're gonna they're gonna set the tone with their run game. Uh, so, you know, for us, we gotta have to limit explosive plays. We gotta make them earn everything that they they get, you know, and take advantage of our opportunities. And when we get them in situations, uh, we gotta get them off the field and give our offense a chance to go to work. Definitely, and. And when you're on the field, what um, what are the keys as far as their defense? Who who do you have to make sure you contend with? Well, <laughs> man, uh, you just look across the board, and there's not many weaknesses <laughs> on their D. I mean, the, up front, they're really big and and just can plug gaps. They've got they're great. Their linebackers can can really fly, and they just fly around and make plays. And man, then you you look up and somebody's trying to to challenge their secondary and those guys back there are, are really, really, you know, spectacular as well. So, you know, I've only had a, a, a few hours of film underneath me watching them, you know, and same with my coaches. Mm-hmm. And so, um, you know, right now, I don't know if I see any weaknesses over there, but we, you know, um, but, but we'll figure something out, you know, over the weekend and, and uh, try to get after these guys. We want to thank the head coach of both the Bulldogs and the Texans, Coach Scott Surratt, Coach Doug Warren, for joining us. Now that we've heard from the real experts, we'll hear hear from us who think are experts as the crew for the website breaks down these games. We kind of do these in in different orders. Uh, So you'll have Chris Daly, then Brett and and the crew from NETSN, and then I'm going to bring on uh, Grant Goodwin, and then I'll bring on Coach X, and then I'll bring on Sports Writer of the Year, Matt Diggs, uh, to finish all this up. So first off, here is Chris Daly and then Brett, and the NETS crew, NETSN crew giving their picks for this game. Hi, this is Chris Daly. You know me from Lone Star Gridiron, but you may also know me from Board Game Legends. That's right. Uh, 2018, we came out with the game Friday Night Legends, in which originally it was just Texas high school football teams that you could play against each other in this board game based on their real stats. So you could take the 1983 Dangerfield team and you could play them against Johnny Manziel's Kerrville Tivy team or maybe that great 2015 Katie Tigers team. Uh, whichever teams you want, you can play. It's a great board game. Uh, it has expanded now and covers the entire country. In fact, we just had some German teams added to the thing uh, because uh, 
Germany, there's a lot of U.S. military bases, so there's a lot of U.S. schools there, and they play high school football. So weirdly enough, we have international high school football teams now in that game. But what we like to do is play these state championships using Friday Night Legends. We just didn't have time this time around because it's been a very busy, very wonderful Texas high school football season. So instead, I'm going to tell you what I think would happen if we had played these games. All right. And rest assured, within a week of state championship being over, all of these teams that have appeared at the 2022 UIL state championship football games, all of these teams will be available for Friday Night Legends. You can get them at FridayNightLegends.com or BoardGameLegends.com. All right, 4-8-D-2, the Carthage Bulldogs at 15-0 and going up against Wimberley at 15-0. and I tell you, talk about a clash of state powers. Carthage has done nothing but win, right? They seem to go every year, and they seem to win every year. They have an amazing record in state championships. Uh, Wimberley surprised a lot of people. Not that they were good. They've been good for a long time. They last won the state championship in 2011. I think they went in 19, somewhere in there. Uh, But... Not a lot of people thought they were going to go all the way. And here they are, sitting at 15-0, and 0, going up against the, the Carthage Bulldogs. I tell you, that, that offense for Wimberley is solid. The depth on Carthage is solid. This is one that will come down to one or two big plays, just like when you're playing Friday Night Legends. Play of the teams are based on their actual stats. So if, if you've got a Carthage team that has a bevy of backs and you mostly run the ball, that's what you're going to want to do in the game because they're better at that. Same thing with Wimberley. They've got Johnny Ball running, but they've also got Clint Stover passing all over the place. So they've got a little more freedom when it comes to play selection. I tell you, this is a tough one. I think my sentimental favorite is Wimberley. Carthage looks better on paper, but I would love to take the game Friday Night Legends play these two, and see what happens. For the record, I am picking Wimberley. And I tell you, if the result is not the one you like at the end of the day, pick up Friday Night Legends, replay the game, make the decisions you think should have been made, and see if you can win with the team that didn't. Hey football fans, Christmas is right around the corner. We have the perfect gift for your high school football fan in your life. Friday Night Legends, the board game. With Friday Night Legends, you can play the greatest high school teams of all time against each other based on their real stats. That means you can play the 1989 Odessa Permian Panthers of Friday Night Lights fame against the 2017 Mater Day team and really see who's the better team. Or what about Peyton Manning's Newman High School in New Orleans against Trevor Lawrence's Cartersville, Georgia team? There are thousands of teams in the library from all over the United States. Get your copy of Friday Night Legends at BoardGameLegends.com and be the hero of Christmas morning. Thanks, Chris. And now is Brett and the crew at NETSN. We bring them back in after doing Road to the State. They now tell us who they think wins the state championship, Carthage versus Wimberley. I uh, got to see a little bit of Wimberley play this past weekend. They were really impressive. Uh, the ball kid at running back, is he's like a wrecking ball. He runs over anybody that gets in his way. Um, unfortunately for him, I think Carthage has a bigger wrecking ball, and they're going to knock off Wimberley this week. Um, and take the state championship, complete the undefeated season, and give Scott Surratt his ninth title. Corey, who you got? You know, just looking at the games, the scores are almost identical. Carthage forty-two to thirty-five over Glen Rose, Wembley forty-two to thirty-six over Quero. Uh, if you know anything about similar scores, I'm not going to use another theory, but it is a theory of mine. You always want to go against. You always want to go with the team in the higher kit. And guess who's in the higher Something bracket? Broke. That's Carthage. Please try again. The dogs are going to win. Was this the, the, the 100th tournament, the 100th state title? Well, they'll, they'll, they'll take it today. I'm picking Carthage. 
All right. What you got, Vince? Well, I mean, both of these teams, 15 and 0, uh, they both have uh, displayed dominance over their opponents throughout uh, the season. Uh, ooh, 15 and 0, 15 and 0. I'm going to go with the devil I know. I'm going with Carthage. All right. Kyle, who you got? Uh, I was fortunate enough to be able to call a Carthage game earlier this season when they played Van. The conditions were horrible. Uh, if y'all remember that night, it was raining all <laughs> over the place, a, a monsoon. Um, these kids went out there and played, though, and even in the pouring rain, Carthage hung up 40-something points, and they didn't even use their full offense because they couldn't because of the rain. Uh, then got to watch them against Gilmer. Carthage, man, they they are – in, until somebody beats them like China Spring did last year, I, I'm not going to pick against them. So I'm taking Carthage. All right. Those are our picks. Back to you, Terry. We really appreciate the job that Brett and them have done at ETSN helping us. We've been helping them. Great partnership. Expect bigger and better in 2023. All right. Now, sideline to sideline, Grant Goodwin and I, we talk each and every week, Class 4A and 3A football and 2A in 2023, by the way. So we like to act like we know what we're talking about sometimes. So here is Grant and I breaking down Carthage versus Wimberley. And then immediately after that, I will go ahead and and do Coach X. Uh, So it's Grant Goodwin and I, and then Coach X and I, it's the sideline to sideline crew picking Wimberley versus Carthage on the LSG Sports Network. All right, Grant, on paper, just sounds great. Carthage 15-0, and Wimberley 15-0, and two storied programs, two programs that have been in this game or near this game a lot in the last 10 years. Uh, I know Carthage got the scare against Glen Rose last week, and I know that that has some people wondering, is Carthage, you know, are they vulnerable? I still don't think they're quite vulnerable. No, I don't. I think they just, I mean, you know, they ran up against Hunts, uh, Hunter White, the quarterback for Glen Rose, let, let's face it, one of the best players in uh, all of 4A. Um, you know, I, I th- that's all there is to it. Now, Cody Stover, a quarterback for Wimberley, not so shabby himself. He's a uh, he's he's a dual threat, more yeah. of a more of a passer, but he you know has ran for over a thousand yards this year. Um, and let's go back, you know. Uh, Wimberley beats Quero 42 to 36, a Quero team that uh, uh, beats Silsby, a very good, salty, athletic Silsby team in three overtimes, 58 to 56. So it's not like Wimberley has a blank resume. Oh, you know? no, not at all. I mean, not at all. They're going to show up and uh, they're going to play some football against Carthage. And I think they'll test Carthage for a little bit. But I just think, and look, Carthage might have, you know, some, uh, uh, be banged up a little bit. Wimberley probably is as well. Uh, but I still think this Carthage defensive front uh, is going to uh, uh, control this game, right? Yeah. Um, I think Connor Cuff on offense, quarterback for uh, Carthage, uh, and then Noah. Patty, which I don't know that did uh, Patty played Hatton didn't or what yeah, was it? I, I watched some of the game uh, when I could, but uh, I, I couldn't catch all of it because I was driving. That's not very. Safe. I know Patty played because he had the, the turnover that put Glenn Rose back. Yeah, in that's the game. right. That's right. Um, my issue for Wimberley is simply youth. Cody Stover's had a heck of a year, and I know he's not technically a sophomore anymore as far mm-hmm. as on the football field, but he's still a sophomore when it all, all right. comes to it. Uh, I, I think for them, they're going to have to give the ball to, to, to Johnny Ball, uh, the, the uh, maybe one of the most dynamic players. Hey, in- we've seen Birdsong take over a game at receiver, though, too. Yes, exa- yeah, good point. Now, uh, you know, Wimberley's offensive line is going to have to uh, give Stover some time, right? Yeah. Because that defensive front for Carl Carthage, make no bones about it. No matter what happened last week, they are still the best offensive or defensive line in uh, uh, 4A. Yeah, e- even if they have to play a couple second teamers on their team, because believe me, their second teamers are going to be sitting at all district. Uh, I-, I-, I think for I think for Wimberley, it- it's it- it's come out and, and be fast uh, and and try to get up early and get Carthage doubting themselves. Mm-hmm. I think for Carthage, and I always say this about every favorite, and so I could use this in everyone is 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 you have to weather that storm and. and and I do think this is one of the interesting Doug Warren versus versus Scott Surratt, Matt Step on day, uh, 
Dave Campbell's pointed out how, you know, not that other coaches haven't been good, but this is a true chess match because Doug Warren's one of those that he's like, right. He'll come out this week and just have something completely mm-hmm. different looking if he feels that that's what they need to do. So I, I do think that this game is closer, but I, I still think at the end of the day, Carthage will wear down a young Wimberley team and end up winning by a couple touchdowns. Do you think uh, uh, KJ Edwards is going to, uh, at running back, the freshman for Carthage is going to uh, announce himself? in the state championship game and become one of those uh, you know, household names we see come out of Carthage? Or is it going to be more of the uh, – uh, learn- how do you say it? Lorandian Dow- yeah. Dowden? Yeah. I, I, I could see I could see the young guy. That, that Again, we've talked about We said it in week eight when he popped out. We were told that this was about to happen. And, and that's what Surratt does is they bring they usually bring something different about week eight of the season, and, the, and that becomes their staple for the rest of the year. Uh-huh. Uh, and, I, and I think Edwards will have a huge game. I, I think this is a higher scoring game than what people think. I do think Wimberley will be able to put some points on the board. Um, but I also think that I think Carthage is not – I don't think Carthage is really worried about Wimberley's defense because if there's one negative, and it's not really a true, true negative, but if there's one negative, I, I think that this Wimberley off our defense can be exposed at times. Yeah, I, I like Carthage by 14 points, but I do think it might be a little bit lower scoring maybe. All right, Coach, for a Division two, Carthage 15-0 and versus Wimberley 15-0. and uh, I said this uh, to – I think to Diggs or, or maybe to Chris on one of the other parts of this show that, you know, on paper, this sounds like one of the great matchups. Uh, and I know Carthage had the scare last week, but I, I still contend as great as Wimberley has done this year. And I like their quarterback, Cody Stover. He's a sophomore. And, and those are the ones that Carthage's defense tend to feast on are the young ones. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, I just think it's a cool story that Wimberley's quarterback can move and they just throw in another one that's just as good and he gets them to the state championship game. Yeah, I mean, I mean think I about think it. Both of them are playing at state. This Cash McCallum for China Spring is playing in the other game. And then again, sophomore Cody Stover, he's he's now leading the Wimberley charge. And I think that's just a testament to, to the Wimberley program too. And the region they're in doesn't hurt either. Would have been awesome had they been playing each other. That oh, that would have been oh, like, that would have been greatness, man! I, yeah, I would pay for that. Matt one. Step and Greg Tepper would be going crazy about that. Um, but <laughs> and I would have been too. I mean, I, I mean, like, how do you? I would have spun that, especially if I was coaching for one of mine. Have spun that big time. But but yeah, no, that was just that would have been really cool. But they're not. They're, but they're playing Carthage instead. So I mean, it's not like you're playing, you know, a bunch of spares. You're playing Scott Surratt. Or just I saw, I guess Tepper or somebody. Was, step or somebody put on Twitter like Scott Surratt has more state championships than he has losses in the playoffs. Yep. Like uh, that's 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 crazy. Yeah, I mean <laughs> that's it, unbelievable. Um and so although like I was just talking about earlier on the last show, so if you want to hear what I said, you should listen to the last show except I'm gonna say it again so you can hear it now. Um they almost they almost let that one get away from them. Uh, against Glenros, like, I was at the game, and uh, and it was fixing, it was fixing, to get out of hand. Like I was sitting there watching it with, with some people in there. And they said, uh, "I said, well, you know, how long? Because how long you want to stay?" And because Carthage was up to one fourteen, I said, "Well, Carthage scores, and Glenros doesn't. Carthage scores again, uh, and then you know it'll be over. Like they won't be able to do it." And so then Carthage runs the opening kickoff back, or the not the opening kickoff back, the the, the third quarter kickoff. Just runs it, houses it, stops them, stops Glen Rose. And I was like, all right, well when they score on this drive, we'll we'll head out, and go grab something to eat, watch something else, watch another game on our phone or something like that. And uh, and then Carthage scores and gets it called back, and then Glen Rose scores, and then Carthage fumbles, Glen Rose scores, Carthage fumbles. Like, whoa. This isn't supposed to be happening, and everybody in the stands on the court of the side is looking around and going, "Well, they were supposed to. They were supposed to tap, and the Glen Rose kids never did. I mean, they were really close to be to playing one more week and slaying the Carthage Dragon, which would have been like I think you said on one of the shows. If Carthage didn't win the state championship, that would be like the '83 Dangerfield Tigers losing the state championship yep. game, or when Medina Valley beat the '84 Dangerfield Tigers. Like that would have been the type of upset that it was." And it would have been amazing. Um, having said all that, Carthage is really, really, really talented. And 
they're down and they're, I've never seen anybody move the ball on, on Carthage like Lenros did. And the quarterback, like they, they put him on the, the big screen there at the store a handful of times. Dude looks like he's like he looked like he was like thirty five years old. Yes. So I'd be checking the dude's eligibility. The guy's got a worse hairline than I do. Hey, hey, um, hang on, hang, hang on. Speaking of, did you see about the twelve year old somewhere here in Texas? Uh he's a running back or something and he's playing in one of those leagues and his mom posted his picture and he's supposed to be 12 and he has a mustache and he has a half a sleeve of tats and he i'm, I'm not kidding look this up if you have it he, he looks like he's 42 years old he's, he's his name daniel monta <laughs> now he's not pitching in the college or in the little league world know. series but i'm telling you it, it ain't much further i mean this kid and maybe he really is uh maybe he really is just 12 but i'll put it to you this way it's such a big thing his name is jeremiah johnson it's such a big thing if you just go to google and type 12 year old instead of going to the pages grant likes to go to it immediately drops down to football players so that's how big of news because i'm telling you dude he does not look like he's 12 years old yeah, I'm I'm working on a school computer, so I'm not typing in twelve year old. I'm not uh, not doing because there's not twelve year old like you can put stuff behind that and it's it's okay, but not in a school setting. Like you put twelve year old single mot scotch, you know that's that's perfectly fine, but you still don't want you searching for that on a computer at school anywhere, you know either. That's so a good I'm point. Not going to do that. I'll do it on my phone, I guess. You yeah. know, but. But then, yeah, no, I'm not. Never mind. I'll just take your word for it. No, I'm just not going to do it. Um, but uh, so Wimberley. Wimberley is the thing we're here to talk about. Yes. Um, and Carthage. We didn't talk about Carthage, too. Um, Wimberley. I, I really hate picking against Wimberley because Wimberley, I think, is one of the nicest towns in Texas. Yes. Um, just, just the beauty of, of the hill country um, is, is awesome. And the fact that Wimberley were like, you know what, we are living the in the nicest part of the state. We were in one of the nicest, prettiest, cleanest towns in the state. We're in, damn it, we're gonna call ourselves the Texans. It's just freaking awesome. Although I've always so what are the girls? What are the girls' teams in Wimberley? Do you know? I think they're the Lady they Texans, sort of, aren't they? They should be, because I was this is hear me now, Tarleton State University. Take the extra in out of the Tex Ans for the girls' teams. Oh, are they like, still doing that? They were when I haven't been back in a long time, but yeah, they were when I was there. And I was like, look, man, I've met a lot of girls from Texas. None of them did I ever say, hey, are you a Tex Ann? Like, I never, never, never did that. Like, you know, and just like, hey, you guys, your girls are hot. You're from Texas. So. That's what it is. They're just from Texas, so like they should really, that's change their mascot to from Texas. But now, that would be Wimberley good. does. It's just I'm looking on their thing. It is just Lady Texan, not Texan. As it should. Good job, Wimberley. And with that being said, I'm picking cards. <laughs> And that's the sideline to sideline crew with their view. And we're going to wrap things up with. One of my good friends, Matt Diggs, one of the best guys when it, when it comes to talking high school football in the state. Uh, he's been doing this as long as I've been. Uh, I think this is his 22nd year of officially covering Texas high school football. So we've seen some things, and he's a really good guy, and he has a very interesting view. I don't always agree with it on certain games and teams and the concepts and stuff, uh, but he always has sound reasoning, and, and he brings facts. He, he doesn't just you know just say things. If he says it, he has a reason. He's also the 2022 P- Powell Sports Writer of the Year. And he's a Varsity Celebrity Pick'em Challenge champion. And he loves to tell everybody that. You can find him on DFW Inside High School Sports. uh, And we do appreciate him. So he breaks down his unique way, Carthage versus Wimberley. All right, Matt. We've been saying the theme of these preview segments in these shows because you and I were, if nothing but honest, as great as state championship week is, it, it's been a this this year is about everybody that seems to be coming back has been here. This is no exception. You've got Carthage fifteen and zero versus Wimberley fifteen and zero. Two iconic coaches, two iconic programs. This this all should be what you would go. Oh my God, this is going to be an iconic game. I don't see it. I, I just think Carthage will go back to normal and 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 really give a sophomore quarterback for Wembley a lot of fits. 
you know, when I when I look at Wimberley and, and I, I've had some very trusted coaches tell me if you if you're starting a sophomore, that's basically a loss right there. And then you got, uh, you know, and Wimberley hasn't had that loss already. And then you got one of their best defensive players, uh, also a line or also a sophomore, yes. the linebacker. Uh, so you know, you look at Wimberley, and obviously this is a team that is well positioned to be back. But you, I, I think you made it, and you might not have even, you know, intended to say this. You said Carthage is going to get back to the way that Carthage should be playing. What if Carthage doesn't get back? What if Carthage was exposed by Glen Rose last week, and Wimberley, with maybe an offense significantly better than Glen Rose, is able to do the same exact thing? Have Carthage has a couple of mistakes here and there. Why couldn't Wimberley end up doing the same thing? What about the Wimberley offense versus the Glen Rose offense makes you confident that Carthage is going to be able to shut that down? Because the Carthage I saw got ran through like a like a knife through butter. Uh, for me, it's because Glen Rose had maybe hands down the class for a Division II player of the year in Hudson White. The only reason he won't win it is because he was hurt for a majority of the season. And by the way, even in that stretch where he wasn't playing, which was like five or six games, that offense was still scoring 50 points. I I think what happened in that game, and I say Carthage get back to playing better, I just think people – and I, I'm not trying to be an ass, but people not named sideline to sideline were not understanding how good Glenn Rose was. And Grant kept trying to tell everybody last week. He said it on the show. And we got emails about, oh, my God, how crazy. He said, look, I think Carthage wins, but I think Glenn Rose is the best team that they have played to date and will give them the toughest game. And, and I think he, he was right, obviously. But I, I don't – I think Cody Stover is going to be a wonderful and is already a wonderful quarterback for Wimberley. Uh, but I just don't – Hudson White was just on a different level. Hudson White was – Major Bowden against Carthage, and great defenses always seem to struggle when they play that one team that has that one stud, and and, and they just kind of do their own thing, and that's what he did. And I just don't think Stover can do that for Wimberley. And ultimately, you know, we we it, it's a recurring theme on our our shows. Carthage has been here. Carthage yes. understands it. Carthage was down and should have lost. I think it's three or four times now at the star. They should have lost, but they find almost these remarkable ways to figure it out and, and win. Yep. You just can't pick against Carthage. But again, I can see from what I saw and all props to to Grand, if you know, sober or otherwise, he knew how great the <laughs> Rose was because I didn't. You know, I just figured it was a, a their region, and we all, you know, a lot of teams look good against Region One teams uh, in, in that district. You know, it, it were, was very offense heavy, but not quite the defense that you would yeah. expect. Uh, so if Wimberley can, I, I would not be shocked to see this game closer because again, I. I I saw how porous their defense was against Glen Rose. So Wimberley with that offense certainly has an opportunity to do something, but you can't pick against Carthage. But I think this game has potential to be better than we think it is. But even if it's a 49 to 42 kind of a game and Wimberley exceeds all of our expectations, ultimately they're going to be putting the ring on the Carthage Bulldogs. You know, I, I was as you were saying that, I was just trying to think. Has any of the Carthage State Championship games been truly competitive? Like, I'm trying to think off the top of my head. I guess the first one against Salina way back in 08. But even then, Carthage, and that was when Dwight Smith and Kadaris Blackshaw was, Blackshaw was the quarterback for them and running back. And they still eventually ended up winning that by like three scores. So, yeah, I'm like you. You can't. You cannot. Until they lose in a state championship game, I don't think I'll ever pick against Carthage and Scott Surratt in a state championship game. Yeah, the smart money. Or, you know, you remember that China Spring game a couple of years ago, and then Midlothian Heritage, and yeah. now Glen Rose. I, I, you know, and, and I like that he keeps going back. He, he's not scared. He's not playing the superstitious thing. I know a lot of Brock fans were feeling a little super, uh, superstitious about going back to the star uh, after Malikov and after Pottsboro the last couple of years. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to, you know, you can, what are you going to say? I'm not going to go play at AT&T because we've lost there a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. I know not, we're not talking about Carthage at this point. Good point. But, you got to keep playing at these uh, stadiums. You got to keep going, and I think that Carthage is by far the favorite. But watch for Wimberley to make it closer than a lot of people think. And with that, this show comes to a close. I first want to thank everybody that helped put these shows together. Uh, this is my favorite week of doing shows because it's so fun, so hectic. 
doing 10 pregame shows or preview shows, however you want to call them, uh, and, and having a short time frame because, you know, we can't really do anything until we know who makes it. And you cannot assume, you know, been there many times where you start to hedge the bet and get things ready for one team, and then, boom, they get beaten that uh, state semifinal. Uh, so you have to wait, and then you, you try to get these coaches to do interviews, and they're already being busy, busy, busy uh, because of their normal obligations and then the other media obligations. And, and so I appreciate all the coaches that 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 uh, were on these shows. I appreciate everybody uh, that gave their picks on these shows. And I appreciate and we love you, the listeners. 2022 was an amazing year for Sideline to Sideline, for Lone Star Red Iron, and 2023 looks to be even bigger and better. More shows, more content. Again, you can find us at LoneStarGridIron.com. Follow us on Twitter at LS Gridiron, at Grant and Terry, at LSPN100. Find us on Facebook, Lone Star Gridiron, or Sideline to Sideline. Check out NETSN, NETSN, uh, dot live on Twitter, NETSN underscore live. I hope everybody has a very safe uh, travels if they're going to the games or for the holidays. May you have a Merry Christmas, a Happy Hanukkah, a Happy Kwanzaa, a Happy Holidays, a Happy whatever it is that you love and support. Do it well and do it safely and until next time oh by the way post game shows each and every night during these state championship games they start at 10 so check those out and now until then i'm terry bennett this has been the sideline to sideline lone star good earn class for a division two state championship preview show on the lsg sports network <laughs>